Perfect. All right. Let me know when you're All right. We're streaming, but let's give it like another 30 seconds because the first thing happens when you start watching Twitch is you get a commercial. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you... uh, Trying to find our our own feed so I can look at the chat. Here we go. Okay. Did you change the title card, by the way? I did this time. Cool. Cool. Our our Nintendo Direct is no longer Jackbox Party Pack 5. I appreciate that. (laughs) It is E3 2019 discussion with Luke Lore and Sean Capri. Oh, there you go. Luke Lore gets the the bill. Gets the top line. Good for him. It's a a promotion, despite, despite the way I feel about him. That's cool. I like that. I, I will tell you, Justin, I actively looked and, for your sake, hoped for Donkey Kong stuff, and I did not see anything specific oh, apart from the rare stuff. Oh, you're too kind. That was good. Good of you. As much as I was giving you a, a, a ribbing, as we do for the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, though. And yeah, my great. wife cracked. My wife lost it. For which one? That. Yeah, Luke Lore. Like the way you said it, my <laughs> wife lost it. She, she still walks around the house. Um and says, uh, Sean Capri, and then she'll look at me and go, and Luke Lore. It's, <laughs> it's fun. I thought maybe it was my comment of, like, how do you make the Xbox drive better? Drop Luke. Oh, no. <laughs> Sean, don't do it. Don't do it. My, uh, my annual uh, co-host replacement is coming up, I think. Sure. So. I was going to say your, your annual performance review of your co-host is coming yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Tim, what are, you doing? what are you doing Wednesday afternoons, man? <laughs> it's the only show I'm on. Don't take me away. <laughs> That's too funny. Hmm. Are we ready? Are we ready there, Jesse? Um, I think I'm streaming, but okay. uh, I think we ended up making a 30 second video and it stopped. I'm not sure. Okay, we'll let you. We'll let you get that sorted. You guys have obviously seen the direct. I assume. Oh, there we we, we got a we, we, okay, we got a live button. Okay. All right. Now okay. I I don't know. I guess somehow we, we the stream must have glitched a little during the buffering, and it okay. made a 30 second video, and then now we're live. Okay. Perfect. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Nintendo Direct E3 2019 post-discussion. My name is Justin Mass, and I am here with four of the coolest gentlemen around the internet. Of course, I'm speaking of the beard from the Midwest, Mr. Jesse Waldack, the man with an amazing Super Mario cap, Mr. Timothy Alf, and of course, joining us, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Nintendo show, but I have invited two of the coolest Xbox people that I know because I only know two Xbox people because that's a dying platform anyways. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sean Capri, my native North American buddy, and of course, Luke Lore. The insipid <laughs> ghost is joining us, folks. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. How are we today? Great, man. Thank you for having us on. You know, uh, I know that mo- uh, many people know me uh, from the uh, the Xbox Drive, but I also run If We Ran Nintendo, and we got to admit that to Nintendo of uh, Canada today. That it was really awkward. Telling them I run a podcast, or I do, I'm on a podcast that says that we could do it better than you guys. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was <laughs> that was under the guise of of your representation badge that said I'm with Nintendo Dads. Is that right? I'm with Nintendo Dads. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a good we story. Better, we'll get to better. that later, okay. though. Okay, that's great. Uh, yes, and of course the guys are here joining us. They have been our E3 2019 Nintendo Dads representatives. They're going to talk to us about their time at the booth uh, and all that good stuff. But of course, I would be remiss if we did not start off by giving a huge thank you to our amazing Patreon supporters who help us keep this ad free, keep us live, keep us. And to be honest, it's actually paying for Sean and Luke. Uh, they have quite the charter bills that they require for us to pay for them to be the representatives. They're in an Airbnb, and we apparently have to pay their bill now. So, guys, Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting us um, at that level. We appreciate it. If ever could just bump that up to about $30, we can pay for their lift bills. Wait, Sean, show. we're getting money? You didn't tell me. Yeah, but it's going to, we got to buy batteries for the remote because we can't even operate the TV. <laughs> yeah, it has it's, dead batteries. it's also probably Canadian money, Luke, so it doesn't really matter for you. It's right. like, it's just pennies. It's I appreciate money. that. Yeah, uh, but guys, we are going to break down our E3. Now, this guy's again. This is our bonus episode on Tuesday. We are hot off E3. We're going to talk about the direct, a little bit of news that's came out from uh, the Treehouse, and of course, Luke and Sean have been playing some games. They're going to talk to us about the games they've had hands on with. So let's uh, let's go over to this one first, gentlemen. General thoughts about the direct. Obviously, Jesse and Tim, we did our our, our live reaction. You can catch on YouTube. Um, but I'd love to hear, has, has that changed, or how has your reaction maybe over the last several hours settled since the Direct? Uh, Tim, I'm going to go to you first. So I actually got to watch it again with uh, my kids to get their reaction, to see uh, what they would uh, 
react positively to um, or not positively to. And so there was a few things that obviously caught like my son's eye. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, Link, obviously Link's Awakening. Um, so he was uh, pretty pretty thrilled about that. And Luigi's Mansion. And every time they came up, he would ask, how much is that one? How much is that one? <laughs> Just basically, it's 60 bucks, buddy. 60 yeah. bucks all. It's, it's, it's a voucher. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a voucher. <laughs> so, but um, I originally, when we were watching it, um, I think it was probably what we talked about before, uh, before we got started, was the you kind of got this mindset of watching it with... Uh, it's a different mindset than if I'm just sitting back and watching it, I think, than doing the reaction where I was kind of tempered. But when I rewatched it, um, I went back up to the hype level because there was a lot of things that I went rewatching it. I was like, you know what? I'm kind of excited about that and maybe not buy it day one, but I want to learn more about it. I definitely am interested in it. Right. So that's great. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Jesse, how about yourself? Yeah, I, I did the same thing. I, I rewatched the the direct later on in the afternoon, like between in, uh, Treehouse events. You know, if it was if they're talking about, say, the Damon Cross Machina, I don't care. So I mm-hmm. put that on mute and worked on this. And uh, I, I forgot how kind of dull the middle part got. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I'm like, I especially when it hit the montage section, I'm like, I don't remember even seeing half of these, but they're there Mm -hmm. because I have them now in notes. And then after that, I watched Josh Thomas's reaction and he, his is kind of the same thing. He was really excited for the first three or four announcements and then it bottomed out and then he got hyped up at the end again. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some pacing around the middle. I mean, you know, it's, you know, we were talking in the pre-show with, with Sean and Luke pacing is hard, right? You've got, it's a very hard job to, to fully stuff that the way you need to, to make it concise, to get to the point, and then to, you know, also realize that not every game is going to be for everyone, and right? Tim so did say it was probably going to be bookended well, and it sure was. Oh yeah, that's a. That, <laughs> I mean that that end bank that end uh, bookend. I mean we're going to talk about that in a little bit, right? But that I mean you want to, you know, in a lot of ways, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to to Luke and Sean being here for Xbox. I feel like that's what was missing. Right. That, and again, for those of you that don't know, we're talking about the obviously the reveal of Breath of the Wild sequel and development. It, it felt like that was probably what missing some from the other conferences that that, you know, thing that you had no clue was coming. That huge shock moment that just kind of like lights the lights the room on fire. And I think Breath of the Wild sequel and development, I think, was especially it. Gentlemen, I'm going to throw over to you guys. Um, you've had an opportunity to watch the direct. What, what are your thoughts on it in general? Uh, I, I thought we took pacing. Certainly was it was an issue at various points, and they Nintendo clearly was trying to cast a wide net to bring in a number of different types of fans. Uh, I was very very excited to see Link's Awakening uh, get more time, learn some of the things that were coming with it. Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games of all time, so that was certainly a wonderful moment to kind of have at the end, and that kind of changes how you think about that show mm-hmm. until you review it. But uh, those were were encouraging. I was surprised a bit by Astral Chain. That looked okay. good. Okay, that, so, that shocked me. Contra looked, looked uh, Sean and I both kind of like double take at each other. We're like, that's Contra? They say Alien Wars? And then, you know, to see that that's the new direction. I think Nintendo continues to do a very good job of taking old IP, putting it in a new comfortable package that somehow honors and respects history, but kind of brings a new light. Well, I know we'll talk about that in a bit with Sean's time and what he got to play. Um, but I thought overall, a very good direct. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it was a good direct. I would say it was a good direct. It did like a, a bit of a, a, a heavy emphasis in that middle there. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to lean into a little bit here. Uh, Luke, you were mentioning Astral Chain uh, specifically. You called that one out. Uh, that that changed your perspective of it, or was that your first seeing of it? Or it well, That was not a game I expected to be coming out as soon as it is. Okay. And Platinum has a unique presentation. Sometimes those games hit, hit very well. Mm-hmm. And are received very well. And other times we get uh, what the internet probably unfairly calls the B team. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, but Astral Chain surprised me because as that trailer went on, by the end I was like, oh, that's Astral Chain. Oh, because it, it just kind of clicked over for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was it was encouraging. And and like Sean mentioned in the pre-show, I think I have my wallet can't handle it, and that's a very good sign. Yeah, yeah. You should I'm check a- out the Treehouse uh, coverage of I that. I know it was great. 
really oh that's yeah. incredible right, that's we will check that vod out absolutely um before we depart because that is one of the downsides to being you don't being here is you don't get to catch the, yeah. the follow-ups yeah yeah i'm i'm interested to see you know astral chain and actually damon x machina are releasing in about a 45 day window of each other it looks like i wonder how that's going to have a bit of a competition just from a genre from an aesthetic design there's a lot of things that look very similar if, mm-hmm. you, if you know what i'm saying that i wonder if that may confuse some messaging um in, in that game and, and may split some of the sales on that potentially but that's mm-hmm. not my issue that's somebody else's issue uh sean let's head over <laughs> somebody else's problem not mine sean let's head over to you what, what's what's your takeaway from the direct well i think part of it is i have like as much again as much as people know me for for doing xbox stuff i have such a love for nintendo like my, i'm decked out of nintendo stuff all over the place here and i named my son link for god's sakes uh, so that automatically takes me to another level when these things happen. It launches up and there's just this magic about it. It's that Disney magic. And I'm automatically excited, even though they're talking about some things I don't care about, like Luigi's Mansion. I couldn't care less about it. Um, I'm glad people are getting who they... I'm sorry, but I'm... And I, you know, I shouldn't launch into the things that are going to offend everybody who's listening to this. Um, there's well, a couple of things that I... That's fine. I, I agree with you, but okay, keep going. Thank you, Joe. I knew you. I knew you would, Jesse. There's a couple things I'm just like, you know, I'm I'm happy for other people, and that's what's so great about this community is like I know people who are really looking forward to an additional character coming to Smash because they dig Smash. But I didn't buy it, and I probably won't be buying it. But I love. I get excited by seeing Banjo and Kazooie come to uh, come to Smash in the way that they revealed it. Like you can't if. I don't know if you don't get excited by that. I question the existence of your soul and your body. So sure. I like, even though it's not for me, I, I still get hyped for that. So that enters into the equation. I cannot afford this. I liked the montage that they did and I like the way that they did it in a very Nintendo way. It wasn't just like, here are your indie games mm-hmm. slammed together. It's here's your roadmap. This is what you're going to be buying for the next six to nine months or whatever it was. And um, the only other thing that I would comment on, and then maybe we'll get to is, um, I think that they did a very necessary uh, handing off of the baton to Doug Bowser. Yeah. Yes. I think Luke liked it. I thought it was awkward as all get out. Um, I think he's just got a little practice to do. I think Reggie yeah. kind of came in and set a standard and, and set an expectation of what we think a president mm-hmm. should be presenting and, and what style. Um, but as we've been meeting all these people, I'm reminding myself that this is the this is the off the side of their desk part of their job. Mm-hmm. They're leading a company and they're leading a team and they're driving vision and everything else. And then they also have to be relatable in this mm-hmm. way. So, I mean, I'm glad that they leaned into it. I'm glad that they kind of got that out of the way, but I thought it was awkward with all those negatives out of the way. I'm hyped, man. I'm so yeah. excited to be a yeah. Switch owner. And, I, I want to just go into the eShop and buy and pre-order games. And Sean, I'm not you know, sure if he didn't want to be the face, they would have someone else. You know, it was just but mm-hmm. you know, Reggie liked to be the face. Then just like you know, NCL's president, we've never seen him. So, you know, they, everyone's learning, got also, their own styles. Shuhei Yoshida was not Shuhei Yoshida right away. You know, yeah, Phil yeah. Spencer was not Phil Spencer right away, mm-hmm. and nor was uh, right. Wada and Reggie they'll, and so many of the people that we think of. So I think they'll grow into the role. I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah and I, I think, think too. It looked like some parts of it look like they might have filmed their parts in two separate studios mm-hmm. oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and brought them together so that might have been part lent that to part of that awkwardness a little yeah. bit yeah but yeah, i did absolutely. like that little animation bit with bowser yeah i thought you know and, and to your and to your point like this was other than other than uh doug bowser being uh, at the invitational on saturday this is the first time he was making a public address to fans in the capacity now as, as the president right and i think you'll find a little bit of his, his, his footing there as well so let's do just a really quick and i do want to say something here i know the mentioning a couple of moments ago about was that kind of sizzle reel for e3s um or sorry for the nindies or kind of here's what you're gonna be playing interestingly enough there was another sizzle reel that nintendo actually put out it's about five minutes long it's on our facebook page um, but they actually addressed in there some games that w- I do not believe were covered in the direct either. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dauntless was mentioned in there as well. Uh, so just as an FYI, I think there was a, there's there's two video takes, so you may want to take a quick uh, yeah. look at that. I now, saw I the five minute video, but I didn't get a chance to yeah, watch it. Yeah, definitely take definitely take an opportunity here. Now I don't want to run down the, the you know step by step. But minute two, here's what we did. I do want to just take, kind of take a, a walk through the the walk through the park, if you would, with me, folks, for some of the games that were announced, and we can have a bit of a quick chat about it. Um, leading or not leading out. This is actually just in the order from the press release. Uh, so if anyone's like, where is he getting all this from? He remembers everything. No, I don't. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, came out, or they mentioned that a little bit longer. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, 
Zelda Link's Awakening, Animal Crossing New Horizons, which was slated as a 2020 game gets delayed, or sorry, 2019 game gets delayed until March 20th, 2020. Um, Sean, Luke, how did that land with you? Are either of you huge Animal Crossing fans and are you, you know, upset sean looks like he's about to cry right now i don't know what's I, happening. i'm not i'm not ups- i'm not upset i th- i i had actually i told bobby i think i thought that this game was going to come on december just because it seemed like they had a very busy um spring and, and perhaps didn't even fall and and the other thing is smash <clears throat> excuse me smash launched in december last year as well this is a type of game that does not need the holiday like the black friday boost this yeah. is a game that will sell no matter what day that it that it launches um now, I will say that I was away from the TV when they dropped the date. I didn't hear that until maybe a couple minutes afterwards. So I didn't have that, like, hype, 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 and then drop with the, with a delay of a date. Um, but I think that's a great time for that. Mm-hmm. I want to play Animal Crossing in the springtime, actually. I kind of want that, like, pick out the weeds out of your yard. Um, Chelsea and I, my wife and I, um, we forged a, a, a good portion of our relationship with, with Animal Crossing. She bought me a 3DS, and we found her that the limited edition New Leaf 3DS, we still have it, and I know that she's really looking forward to that, and she's really bummed about it, but I don't know, man. If, if there was nothing else to play, like if this was the Wii U days and something important like that got pushed, I think I'd be more devastated. Mm-hmm. But it was... It looks gorgeous. It's exactly what I want from a console type of like on uh, and also on the go Animal Crossing experience. I love the name. I think it looks. I think it looks really, really good. Nice, excellent. Uh, Luke, how about yourself? Um, I don't have a much of a relationship with Animal Crossing, but I was very happy to see so many of our friends kind of in the Nintendo community and outside of it get excited because this is one of those games that kind of permeates from casual to the most hardcore. It's for everybody, and so yeah. I was very happy to see that they are getting the game that they they've. Uh, patiently in many cases and not so much in others uh, have wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I would be remiss. I did, sorry, I did walk over um, uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Uh, This is obviously a remake of the GBA one, and I do want to call it a couple things here that are actually in the press. Game Boy. Game Boy, thank you. The the, the press release area. (laughs) Um, So players can actually earn chambers or dungeon rooms and arrange them to complete objects or sorry, complete objectives in new chamber dungeons launching alongside the game as a new amiibo, um, an adorable artwork, book, all this kind of stuff. Um, Link's Awakening. How, what do you guys think and how did this land for you? This may, is... may I talk first on this yeah, one? Yeah, Because please. you have more to offer. But this was the first game I ever beat, ever, on any system. Uh, game Boy was a huge, like many of us, a huge part of my life. And Link's Awakening was special because it was an eclectic take on, Le- on have Legend the Legend of Zelda. I'm sorry. Did you have the printer? I did not. No. Aww. No, I, I sure didn't. But I absolutely uh, adored it. And this new take on that art style seems so appropriate uh, in that it respects and honors the history and heritage, uh, but allows you for something new. And it it just seems like a very special game. Now, Sean got to got to actually play the game while we were here, um, and I I won't spoil his reaction for you, but it was beautiful. Go on, Sean. So how how this how this go for you? This is perfect. I'm a I'm a top down Zelda fan. I don't have the love for the 3D games that many people do, but top down is my style. I think it is. It's. I was saying to uh, to our our tour guides, I guess that um, this is Nintendo's wheelhouse. Yeah, I was trying to ask them about like what material the the game seems to be molded out of like where uh, we've got games that are made out of clay and wool and all these different things uh, or ink and, and paint um, they didn't really have a great they didn't have an answer for me but I was immediately drawn to like the it, it seems handcrafted mm-hmm. and I feel like if they were to reimagine this game in any way that there couldn't be any more perfect way and I love Link's design I think this is the cutest damn Link I ever saw uh, every all the characters around him are ridiculously cute. There seems to be like this, um, almost like a ripoff of Mario hanging around you. There's mm-hmm. raccoons that are super cute, and the dungeons are great. And it it controls exactly as as you want it to. And I don't know what it was, but sometimes I just I was overwhelmed. I, they put the control in my hand to like go. Here's Link's Awakening, and I could barely even move Link. Like it was just it was so perfect. Mm. And um, I really hope that people have a special connection with it because I think that this feels special mm-hmm. um, in in many ways. It's it's hard to describe because it's just so it's such an emotion. It's not it's not logical. It's not a brain thing. This is very much yeah. a heart thing. Sure. And so 
I wanted a top down. I don't know that there was a better way for them to follow up Breath of the Wild in the Zelda universe mm-hmm. um, without going to a top down or a 2D or something like that. And this is it's absolutely perfect, you guys. It's people are going to go absolutely crazy for this game. Yeah, that's I, great. I do. I, I do need to point out that when Sean was playing it, his face went through a wonderfully wonderful range of emotions that the, our presenters were actually. Uh, they kind of paused for a moment because there were there were almost tears coming down his face, the the <laughs> shock and then the excitement and the awe of the different experiences he was having just in that that few minutes that we played it or he he got to play it. I got to photograph it, so I got to capture those, and it was just really neat to see. This game's special. Nothing nothing is better than when you're having an emotional moment. A friend capture you crying. I think that's a beautiful know, moment. Right? That's 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 and you can, and Sean. I mean, even watching you here, I think you're starting to to I swell might be up tired a, too. a little I might bit. Be a little bit tired. And Sunburn yeah, was, was, was by the way. I know, right? I already get rosy, and I get nervous about it. You guys, so thanks for pointing it out. Sorry. Well, it's an audio. <laughs> it's an audio podcast oh, in a lot of ways, God. buddy. But you look great. I love you. Except for Twitch right now. Yeah, shut up, Sean. Jesse, oh, you're yeah. not helping us at all in any way. <laughs> God damn it, Jesse. Now, I, now I would I would say about uh, Link's Awakening. I, by the way, this is th- this is one of the games that I said they had to stick the landing. Do you know what I mean so? My my I messaging bef- before was that Nintendo here had to stick the landing, and what I meant by that was Luigi, Link's Awakening, uh, Villager. Sorry, I apologize. Animal Crossing. They needed to stick those landings, right? We needed some dates. That's all we really needed. Um, I will say a lot of information has come out in the last uh, couple of hours, especially about some collector editions for this as well. Uh, the UK is getting this like banger of like a big box set. Looks incredible. Uh, looks absolutely amazing. And obviously, there's a special edition I think in the US as well. This big game is available on pre-order right now on the eShop as one of your voucher things. So mm-hmm. I am, I am, I was actually, I did not think it was going to be September. I thought that was earlier. That's I thought that was earlier than I was anticipating. I thought it was going to be like a December game, but I am super excited, and the photos are just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm over the moon. This is one of the ones. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly it. I was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's brilliant. And I think the interesting part in the question, the statement you made was, how do you counter Breath of the Wild? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That art style, that that vision, the the environment they had set, and and what Nintendo has done is the polar opposite. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to like, you you know, you, how do you clean your mouth? You have to get something completely opposite, right? To counter that. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, and they talked you know, about that on Treehouse, actually. Yeah. Uh, the they, creator, um, I forget his name. Um, Mike, we'll call him Mike. <laughs> he was Mike. saying that, what do you do after doing Breath of the Wild where it's that big and open, uh, you do this. So yeah. it's exactly what he was, his yeah. vision was. Ab- absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Um, let's, uh, I, I was so mad that I was, I, I had such a, give, I will like take all my money moment. I was like, where, where, where can I buy all the plushies? Where can I buy all the amiibo? Uh, and they didn't even, I don't think they knew about the amiibo cause I asked them about it and they didn't, they sort of got a little bit weird and hush hush about it. It was, it was, I think it, it was a matter of timing cause we asked some Noah people about what the what you know how amiibo support exists and they said uh we can't tell you just it and then to find out like 15 minutes later that okay now it's announced Um, and i think that's the nature of uh, of those conversations especially if the your hosts may not know what has or hasn't been said in treehouse yet Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah I i can see that did you guys get a chance to see what they're doing with the amiibos uh in regards to Link's awakening we, no, I, we know they I was, existed. We just didn't well, get to see them, right? What they unlocked, I, well, I though, asked too. Them, like, I wanted to buy one. I'm like, I want to buy anything you guys have with this, whether they're plushies <laughs> or amiibo. Like, I just want to buy it. And they didn't. They didn't tell me anything about the amiibo at that at that time. And then we, when we left, we saw everything, and people were tagging me about like, look, check out this amiibo. So yeah. obviously, we'd be buying yeah, that. So the, the amiibo, any any Zelda character from any previous generation of amiibo, of amiibo will put an will alter the the attributes of one of the rooms in the chamber mode. It adds Shadow Link to your chamber well, dungeon. The 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 Link's Awakening amiibo specifically does that. Other amiibo yes. can do other yes. things. But that reminds didn't... me of um one of my favorite games is Hyrule Warriors, which is either make or break for some people, but I love Hyrule Warriors and that each amiibo could give you some things and then have an added benefit within it. And I, I like that. So that's nice to hear. Yeah. Um so this, uh, this doesn't sound like it's going to be random. I think the, every amiibo will have a specific task. So when you build your dungeons, you're able to you know fine-tune it a little bit more. Yeah. 
A uh, couple of things to so I'm going to just talk about a little bit here. Also, uh, obviously, they have the big Smash Brothers uh, reveal. We did predict there was going to get two of the paid DLC that would uh, be announced or who they were. So obviously, that did come up. Uh, we had the heroes from Dragon Quest series revealed uh, that will be a su- that will be available this summer. And then, of course, the big surprise. And I think this is kind of a little bit of the Xbox connection. This is where you know uh, Microsoft did say, "Hey guys, you should make sure you tune into the the Nintendo conference for for a reason." Uh, this would be, of course, Banjo Kazooie. Uh, being announced as part of the the currently in the house that Rare has, uh, and that's in uh, Microsoft Suite. Neither of you, or both of you mentioned, or kind of ever in this call, not a huge Smash players, but uh, what do you guys think of these reveals? Oh, I thought, fantastic. Well, Fire Emblem, I'm sorry, Dragon Quest was great because I know that has a huge community, and I was happy for them. I was glad it wasn't a Fire Emblem character. <laughs> oh, sweet uh, God, right? Banjo-Kazooie, I think, is a, is a wonderful tribute to what rare did for nintendo and what mm-hmm. nintendo did for rare i think it was very appropriate that they exist within a, in smash given that sonic and so many other characters from from other franchises that now coexist are there so that was very appropriate it almost felt though and sean i don't know how you felt i was surprised that that banjo kazooie uh presence did not lead into a rare replay relationship of some kind mm-hmm. um it almost felt like that was chopped out now that could be the internet and myself uh, wishful thinking and, and my own interpretations just you know to hold into the wrong wrong ideas but um i'm glad to see this i hope it's a continued step in a relationship and partnership but uh, appropriate uh, and nice to see yeah, I agree with you there, um, Luke. I definitely felt like it was on the back end we would have, and coming out this month, the re, re, you know rare replay collection or whatever it is, right? I felt like that that was to your point. Felt like they were ninety percent of the way there, and they just they kind of missed that ten percent. And again, don't know if maybe it's just not compatible or not possible or whatever it is, but it just felt like there was a miss there for sure. I hope Sean? that one of uh, the alt colors for Banjo Kazooie is its N sixty four model. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that would be great. That was a that was like on Tomb Raider. They had a, a modern Tomb Raider, and you could go back to like the 1996, like PlayStation One or PC. And so, like everything's very serious, and then you've got this like cartoony, pointy boob Lara Croft. But anyways, yeah. Uh, I, what did I think of the reveal? I thought it was perfect. I think they pay, they they did a nice nod to Rare in the their Rare and to go. It started with Donkey Kong, and obviously Rare played a, a key role in that, and then a, a great troll. Where you you think that's what you're getting, and then the the duck hunt dog and bird and the ducks show up, and you're like seriously, you know, like you're just waiting for it to happen. They didn't let it linger too long, um, so a, a great announcement. But on the on the element of rare replay, I think you guys should just like just chill out a little bit. Like some things are just gonna have to be. There's like six exclusives on Xbox, so just you guys have enough. You don't need. To have like we're, we're still waiting for Persona Five exclusive. first. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's to that point. Like, I think that's what Smash is special for. Is that it, it allows you to have those things that are exclusive to other platforms be celebrated on a Nintendo platform, and you don't need more than that. Like, that's that's why that's what that's the magic of Smash. They may lead to maybe something else, but I never really expected to see Rare Replay, so there wasn't a disappointment on my end. Sure. Um, but yeah, man, that's that's what Smash is there for. That's the magic of it. There's characters that shouldn't be there, and that's awesome. So, like, once they once they give us that inch, then everybody takes another couple miles with that. Yeah. Go like, well, if we got the character, then obviously we're gonna get the game. It's just not how that works. There's a huge amount of time and effort that gets yeah, these characters into that game. It didn't work with cloud, so it does not set a precedent. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So, just a quick little uh, rundown here. I'm gonna kind of list some of the other games that were that were announced here, and then we're gonna come back and say, hey, if, you, if anyone you kind of want to talk about them or which ones you're excited about or, or thoughts, we'll uh, we'll do that, and then we'll jump into you guys' experience at the uh, booth, obviously. So, other games that were announced: Marvel Alliances Three, Black Order, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Astral Chain, Damon X Machina, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, featuring Legend of Zelda, Dragon Quest Eleven S, Echoes of Elusive Age, the Definitive Edition, Dragon. Oh. Oh, the, long names. <laughs> the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, uh, the complete edition from CD Project Red, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics Tokyo 2020 from Sonic, or sorry, from Sega, the Dragon Crystals Age of Resistance Tactics from Bonus XP, um, uh, Trails of Mana from Square Enix, Collection of Mana from Square Enix, Contra Rogue Corpse from Konami, No More Heroes from Grasshopper. Empire of Sin from Paradox and, uh, sorry, from Paradox, uh, Benzur, uh, Dragoon remake, 
uh, from Forever Entertainment, uh, Resident Evil six, uh, 5 and 6 from Capcom, and then the sizzle reel consisted of Dead by Daylight, Stranger Things 3, Spyro Ignition, Re- uh, Reignited Trilogy, Just Dance 2020, New Super Lucky's Tale, uh, Minecraft Dungeon, uh, Nino Kune, uh, Katana, The Sinking City, Al- Aliens Isolation, Hollow uh, Knight, uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Master Edition, Dauntless, Wolfenstein, Young Bloods, Doom Eternal, and Elder Scrolls. Uh, so that was a jam-packed um, E3. And I don't know uh, if they you saw there. it, but as you're going through the list, we're getting thumbs ups and thumbs down from. I did not. I was. I had to literally <laughs> scroll to the other screen and do all that. So uh, I'll go, Tim. Anything there that stood out for you that you kind of want to, you know, sit in the pocket and talk about for a moment? Uh. I didn't show much excitement during the initial watch, uh, but after watching it again, I actually am pretty excited for Panzer Dragon. Okay. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but Dragoon, uh, Dragoon okay. Um, because I didn't get to play it. I didn't. I you know when I was a kid, um, it came out what a '95, I think it was. I couldn't get a Dreamcast or anything like that. I was stuck on I think PlayStation is what I picked up. And really, really, I think nowadays it is just being stuck on PlayStation, right? Like, just, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to be there. So that I got excited again to see that, and I'm looking forward to trying that out because I missed out on it. So okay, excellent, uh, Luke. How about yourself? Uh, I love that Switch is a wonderful home for the Spyro uh, Reignited trilogy. I love that collection. I think it's great. Um, I'm so excited for you guys to be getting Witcher Three. Mm. Such a wonderful game. That is one of the best games I've ever played. It's Breath of the Wild caliber, in my opinion. And so if anybody missed out and Switch is an entry point for them, I think that's fantastic. Uh, I thought it was... I I often want to push back on the narrative that everything needs to be uh, beyond Switch. I think Switch is a wonderful option, but I don't recommend Doom Eternal or Wolfenstein 2 if you have the option to play it on one of the more powerful consoles because they are visual powerhouses that where FPS uh, frames per second and the, the first person shooter genre to kind of go together. Um, but it, that is a wonderful list of titles uh, across a number of different genres for people to check out. And I think anybody that objectively looks at that list, there is something for you, uh, mm-hmm. whether you are a solo switch player or whether you, you play multiplayer, whether it switches your only system, whether it is not, um, so I, I was very happy for it, and I know uh, personally I have an affinity for Ultimate Alliance, which is is a unique relationship, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> okay, all right, We're, let's let's go back to that soon. Uh, Sean, how about yourself? I feel like there's like the the usual hitters, like the ones that everybody's kind of excited for, and I'm obviously falling into those camps as well. Um, I think Astral Train is a new IP that I've got to dive into. Uh, but while we were just walking by the Nintendo booth today, there was a big setup for Mario and Sonic at the Olympics and I don't know man I don't know what I've never really had a drawing to this game but for whatever reason I'm like I gotta have this game dude it looks so good and uh with online play with friends and stuff um I want to I want to play that game I still have I don't even think we talked about Mario Maker 2 but yeah man lucky super lucky I I want to tell Nintendo fans I've played super lucky on Xbox if you've not played it it it's a wonderful it's a wonderful title. It feels like Mario 3D World and Mario Odyssey kind of merged together, not in terms of quality, but just in terms of gameplay. It's not mm-hmm. on the quality of those levels, but yeah. it is a great place for that character. He's bright, he's colorful. Uh, don't don't shy away from this one. Playful Corp does a wonderful job with their games and Super Lucky's Tale. I'm very happy for you guys to have that. I'm sorry I jumped in on that one, but it's worth no, it. No, that's great. That was actually one of the ones that actually stood out for me, Luke. Actually, I thought that one looked, looked fantastic, so that's uh, definitely there. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, you guys are very polite to each other. My gosh, like it's you know. Thank you, may it's I please? Disgusting. It's I'm, I'm I'm like, Jesse, shut the hell up, right? Like I think you know maybe it's maybe it's we've been together. You know, for we were years. we were waiting for an elevator when we were trying to let the other one get into the elevator first, and then it just like closed and it went <laughs> off. Just without left. A, yeah. Just well, well, it really was. Yeah, you guys figure it out. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, well, you got to remember, Justin, you've been with Jesse for a lot longer time than these two have worked together. Still in the honeymoon so. period. They're still yeah. in the honeymoon period. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just a mean man, also. So let's start with that. Um, I need to stop so, away for a minute. I'll be right back. Yeah, go away. No one no, eats you. All right. So what? Are, so, Bobby and I have already fought and made up. So yeah. yeah. Uh, let's now. Gentlemen, let's talk about your time at the booth. That's what that's what we're here for. That's why we're really here. You guys had an opportunity to hang out in Nintendo of Canada, uh, do a booth tour, play some games. Guys, what what happened? What was that experience like? What did you play? What do we need to know? This is your fl- this is your floor now. 
it was very courteous of them to make time for us. We're we're nobodies in a land of lots of people, very uh, with giant audiences. So it was it was a surreal experience overall to kind of like move past the Nintendo booth and go to this super secret. This is where the media goes, and everybody's super serious. Uh, but you know, it's amazing what happens if you're just kind to people because I think we 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 formed a, a really loving and special relationship with um, the people who took care of us there. And so we had two games to play, actually. We played Link's Awakening and we played Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And by the end of it, uh, I'm not even joking. I'm not, and I mean, Luke, not that he would t- call me a liar to, to right in front of us. Uh, but legitimately, we, got, we had a half an hour booked and we got to the end of that half an hour and they were all looking for ways to extend our time. There was four sure. of them there who were taking care of us and they were all looking for like, no, there, surely there must be a way for you guys to stick around like we've got more to show you but we got we unfortunately had we had time to play two games uh one of them being Link's awakening that that i spent the the entirety playing and then we played four player uh couch co-op of marvel ultimate alliance on switch so i, I think I, I mean Link's awakening was it was like i said it was special and it is it's and it's great and i don't know if i have a terribly much more to add to it um but luke we we got to play marvel ultimate alliance which I don't know. Do you guys have like expectations for this game are a little bit all over the place? Yeah, it's a little bit scattered. I'm gonna be honest. It reminds me. It looks like Diablo just with a Marvel skin to it. Uh, I don't have an affinity really for like like I like Marvel like we all do, right? Um, I think I think Tim is a little bit excited for it, but I'm like I'm like I I don't know. Like I need to be sold. I'm gonna be very honest with you. With a lot of other things I have on the docket for games, I, I would need a hard sell on this one. So and Tim sounds like he's already on board. So Tim, I'll let you maybe. Maybe jump in here, buddy. I just I used my voucher for it, so. <laughs> so he's in. I'm in already, so. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm back. What are we in for? Uh, uh, Marvel, Marvel Alliance, and oh, Luke's going to st- tell us more. I'm still on the fence well, on that one. After we had played Link's Awakening, which was is, is a wonderful experience, I pushed for Ultimate Alliance because uh, I I feel that I know what Pokemon is bringing. Um, I think I understand more, or I'm sorry, uh, Luigi's Mansion, and I'm excited for that one. And I think y- you either are or you're not for Luigi's Mansion. But Ultimate Alliance was one I had questions about. Now, I love and adore uh, Marvel. I love superheroes. I love DC. I, like, I love it all. If it's a superhero, I, I enjoy it. Um, and so I was predispositioned to to like this game, uh, predisposed to like this game. And I like the Ultimate Alliance titles. And uh, But this, the trailers, I thought, did did not sell me on it. And mm-hmm. I, and I came in with lots of questions, and so to have a chance to sit down with it, we they hooked us up uh, to play local four player co op, all on one screen with the with the switch docked, um, so we were all with with controllers, and we all picked from a, a healthy roster of characters which were um, appropriately cartoony to distance themselves from their movie counterparts, mm-hmm. whereas the square title might be suffering from from confusion there. This mm-hmm. one is not. This is very cartoony. You get some of the X Men, you get some of the Spider Verse, you get some of uh, the Avengers, and there's DLC coming in the fall. But we started playing and. It is what you expect in terms of gameplay. The camera is kind of that isometric 3D uh, looking down with with a healthy barrage of characters. And we immediately noticed that it was extremely fun. We thoroughly enjoyed it. If you've played the Ultimate Alliance titles, you're likely to to enjoy this title as well. But we we did see some quality hiccups as we were playing. Uh, It got a bit pixely when things got very hectic on screen. Um, And it was jarring, I think, because we had been coming from a a heavy 4K uh, set of, of demos prior to the, in the day. But it got very pixely when it got very hectic. The, the moves were, some of them were very cool and some of them very dull, which is a standard Ultimate Alliance trope. Um, but the frames would drop, and we would get. I, I got frustrated at losing my character because of all the hecticness. And I think if we hadn't played four player, that might have uh, been a bit easier to manage if I could have made my own team. But it is. It it was it removed me from a day one purchase. Mm. But I definitely know that I'm going to get this game because I love superheroes and I think I will have a ball making my own teams as they add DLC uh, throughout the course of this game. This is a game I want to play. I want to own. I just don't need to own it on day one, week one. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna have a blast with it over the course of time. It would be more of an evergreen title versus right away. Sean, you were playing also. Yeah, I, I I echo absolutely every every sentiment. The the I mean, it started out great. 
well, we that, like you said, there's a healthy roster, and I was excited to go. I couldn't choose. Like I, I had a hard time like going from Venom to Spider Man to to Rocket and Groot, who were like as a pair, they're a single they're a single character. So it did like strike that I love Marvel, and it's like oh man, you love these characters, so you like this game. Like it's really leaning on that that license, and I think it does it fairly well from that perspective. But yeah, the gameplay it's Marvel Ultimate Alliance has never really been the smoothest game it's it's there for you to like take your favorite like action figures and smash up against the bad guys and it's and it's good fun in that way where we've just moved on along uh, a way since since those original couple of games and for those who who are unaware they were available on the other platforms they were on you could buy them on the on the xbox store or the playstation store up until a matter of months ago they just sort of like disappeared without really fairly unceremoniously and um i think the tell of how I was enjoying myself with this game was, do you think we could buy the other games on Switch anytime? Like, I, I kind of wanted to go back to the other games, to be mm. honest with you. And they said, we have nothing to announce at this time, but they said it kind of jokingly. So I think it's coming. Sure. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not the way that... I th- yeah. And I played the remaster ones recently, like I because I am excited. And I was playing through the second one. And this cartoon style is better, I feel, than the, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. But it was jarringly noticeable that it was a uh, less less powerful or I don't it, know less it just doesn't really value. like why like what is it about it I never really understood that like it's not like that you got a game like The Witcher coming out and they figure out how to do Doom and Wolfenstein right. and then this is a fairly basic type of game that should I feel like it should run better I'm really sorry Tim I'm really really sorry no it's you'll good. still have fun make no mistake yeah. Tim because I'm I am still very excited for this game. I yeah. just don't need to play it day one. But this is going to be a fun game for superhero Marvel fans. And if you like that style of gameplay, fine and dandy. But it's it's tailor-made for those of us who are biased towards that that genre or that that uh, atmosphere. But I don't mm-hmm. see that as being for everybody. That we're all going to rush out and buy because it it's so, right. so amazing. My yeah. kids aren't going to care. They're not going right. to see that. You know? like, so uh, mm-hmm. I, I will, you know, like especially if you're coming from like you guys coming from your Xbox 4Ks or me coming from PS4 sure it, uh, and then going to that I might catch those things but my kids aren't going to care and then once you get into it and you're having fun you're not really going to care either so as long mm-hmm. as the fun factor is there way to sum that up that is a perfect way to say it. my kids are going to have a blast that's a perfect yeah. sentiment to go with it yeah which I think is is so often where the Nintendo audience can sit right like we're 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 not we're not going to we're not getting into the you know throwing it down on the table and measuring teraflops, right? Like that's not, that's never mm-hmm. been Nintendo's conversations all about fun. Right. Mm-hmm. And, 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 but I do think, you know, to your point, I, I think it's important to mention like, you know, it is pixelated and slowing down frame rate. So if that's something that matters to you, it may matter. Right. Um, so, and hopefully someone's going to be caught either before. And obviously we're, in, we're, you know, although I would suspect they're getting near finished builds, right. Yeah, they should that's be at this point. Saying. Yeah. yeah that's they, that's, I'm sorry, Tim. No, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say I was geeking out to start it out, like cl- selecting our the foursome, the, the the four characters. You get bonus points, or you get you get perks and, and additional XP and things like that for selecting um, a group that makes sense to go together. So you have like your like your, your Spider Verse characters or your Avengers and things like that. You get you get perks for that. So I think that there are additions to it that make it uh, worth a look for sure. But it, okay. I mean, if you. I don't think that it's going to come to any surprise anybody who's watched the, the trailers. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I had a great time with Link, like I said, uh, but this one was, it balanced things out a little bit. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? So, those were the two guys that you, or two games you guys had a, an opportunity to play. I'm glad to hear that it sounded like you guys had a great experience there and that they were looking for fun ways to have you stay longer, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there any other games that were being that were being showcased? Obviously, you mentioned Pokemon before. Uh, and Luigi's Mansion, obviously you guys didn't get a chance to play them, but you know, as you kind of looked around and watched over shoulders, I think stand out for you or that you observed? They they fired up Pokemon, so they were trying to figure out how to make our extend our stay a little bit longer, so they fired it up. Uh, and so we got one move, like five minutes of it, but it looks gorgeous. Like Lincoln is uh, he's just beginning to notice Pikachu and he can say Pikachu, he points at it and he gets excited for it. So for me, like this is landing at a perfect time. I've always wanted to get into Pokemon Justin. I know you're a huge Pokemon fan. Huge uh, your, <laughs> your favorite Pokemon. Wobble Puffet, I think is Wobble your favorite. Puffet's my favorite Wobble one. Puffet, your favorite, yeah, for sure. Wobble Puffet? So, Wobble Puffet? <laughs> there you go. Uh, so th- this is I think this is going to be a day one for me man like yeah. there's some games and Nintendo this is a magical thing or a frustrating thing depending on how you look at it games never go down in price man 
And so yeah. that's what makes that voucher actually kind of easy to use because you just you can just pre-order the game like like Link's Awakening and go, well, it's going to be the same price now as it is in two and a half years, so it doesn't really matter. And I think that's the same case with Pokemon. So um, it, it seems gorgeous. It's vibrant. It's it's no longer constrained to the 3DS or a portable system. We have now the power of the Switch, which is hilarious to really say. But in the context of Pokemon, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, but I wish I, I wish I had got a chance to spend a little bit more time with it because this is probably, without a doubt, the the most hype I've, hyped I've been for a Pokemon. Although it's been pretty pretty low in the past. Sure. <laughs> but now is the time. Now is my time yeah. to be a Pokemon. And, and I. And I do think, and again, I mean, you know, I made some commentary about it last week as well. And no, you was, was champions fine. That's you know, yes, let's no. let's say that works. I again, don't ask me. I don't know anything. Like, don't look for my appraisal okay. on that one. <laughs> um, but I do like the game looks gorgeous. The game looks great. Yes. I think you know, my kids are gonna have fun with it. I know it. You know, it's the UK region. It's UK, It's London. They're gonna they're gonna love that, right? So there's a lot going on there that I think it, it does look fantastic, and I am happy that uh, that it's gonna fit well. I know it's it's gonna be a day one purchase for me, despite my my you know underreaction for stuff i thought it was great by the way they did mention during the direct that you can use the pokeball that if you have her for, for let's go but it is more to take your characters out for a walk it doesn't sound like you can use that as a controller but rather transfer your your pokemon to that ball like you could in the let's go pikachu as well so yeah we missed it the first time around but uh when i watched it the second time he did specifically say you cannot use it as a controller but yeah, the, the the travel the, the take your Pokemon and the stroll functionality from Let's Go will persist. Yeah, yeah exactly. Go ahead, Luke. Well, it's Pokemon permeates culture now. Yes. There's, there's films of, of varying levels of reach. You know, even with the most recent De- Detective Pikachu, they are, they are Pokemon companies specifically is doing a great job at, at uh, allowing their brand to now permeate between platforms with, with the mobile platform, having the bank of Pokemon, now with Sword and Shield. And so it looks to me like this is another step in that direction for allowing Pokemon to exist um, wherever you are, whether you are on your Switch. And then if you leave your Switch at home, but you have your mobile device, you can you can actively influence gameplay uh, in, in some ways. And so I think that it's a, a great sign. Sword and Shield is going to do gangbusters. And oh, yeah. I know people like people, I am a lapsed Pokemon fan, but I put hundreds of hours into those gba versions of it yeah. on that sp just flip it up play a little bit put it down yeah. and i'm going back in mm-hmm. i'm absolutely going back in so did you go back luke did you go back in on let's go at all i did not um okay a little bit too nature of, yeah yeah it, something about motion control still puts me off unfairly so i think it's a bias of just being burned with with, with certain things that i expected and didn't get um so i think that's what held me back but i I could see myself on, on a certain day or summertime picking up Let's Go, yeah. you know, whether it's Pikachu or Eevee and just checking it out. And so I just I'm I'm glad to see this game coming. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like the actual motion control of joystick in hand, but playing handheld, it plays like your GBA version. And in fact, it, it, it does have gyro aiming for when the Pokemon moves around. So uh, I think it works out nicer than joystick controls at that point. So yeah. if you get a chance to give it a try, you should give it a try. Yeah, I you know I'd I'd recommend it. I you know I loved to be honest. But again, this is my experience from a parenting perspective. I love sitting down with my oldest daughter and playing it together, right? Mm-hmm. And and because again, it was it was the and I think you know you're talking about a little bit of there, Sean, as well. It was like the perfect game to sit down and. Like it's it's wide open. They can avoid the Pokemon if they want, right? The Nintendo uh, was so kind as to send us the Pokeball Plus, so it was fun to play with the ball and to move move that way. And then if she got stuck, it was easy enough to bust off a Joy-Con, and then I could just join in and jump out, right? Like it was there was an accessibility of it that I think you know as much as people were upset that it wasn't the mainline Pokemon, I think that it was exactly what it needed to be, where it needed to be, and I think I am happy to see there's some influences of that uh, being moved over as well. Tim, uh, you, you're, I think you mentioned before you're you're excited for Pokemon. Your your kids are excited for Pokemon. Is this going to be a day one purchase for you? Yes, I, in fact, I pre-ordered the dual pack because I have two kids who nice. are going to have, you know, one or the other. So, and yeah, if that's not, good parenting. He knows how to get his own Pokemon <laughs> filled mm-hmm. up. That's yeah. smart. That's right. That's exactly. Say, like, if, you if, best be straightened. They both want sword. I'll probably end up with shield. So, yeah. you know, it's, that's exactly it. I think that's what Pear on NBC even said he was doing. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's normally actually... what I do, you know, is whatever my, my 
my son gets, I usually get the other, just so we still have something to trade around with. Yeah. Now, gentlemen, before, you know, I want to be cautious of your time. I know you guys have some flights tomorrow, too, so I don't want to keep you too late, get some sleep. Um, but I do want to, before, we're going, we're going to close off, obviously, here with Nintendo's big closer as well. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, their bookend, their aha moment there, one more thing. But before I do that, I'm going to need both your help, Luke and Sean. Uh, guys, this for, uh, for those who don't know, we uh, are doing a giveaway for a Nintendo Dads voucher, which means you pick whatever game you want and we are going to get it for you. You want the physical edition? We will get that for you. You want digital? We will get that for you. And this is going out to our amazing Patreon supporters. How did they get entered? They only had to support us at Patreon.com. That is it. And so they are instantly entered. So, gentlemen, I'm going to need one of two things from you. Um, Mr. Sean Capri, can you pick a number between zero, zero, and bear with me, I need to scroll through our worksheet here, zero and eight. Could you pick that number? Zero seven. to seven, seven. Okay, you're seven. Luke, I need you to pick now a number between zero and nine. Four. Four. All coffee. All right. So. That is number 74, so zero 04. This is actually funny because um, we don't have their last name. But congratulations to Eric. Uh, Eric. <laughs> Eric, you, Eric, let me tell you something, Eric. You know how to do job. it right. What? I won? Really? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I, this better not be you, Jesse. I, I, I hope not as I, I, I hope not I too. Just, I suspect that is no, this is not you. I suspect potentially by uh, by just looking at potentially some uh, some names here on uh, on their um, might be Adam. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> on their email potentially Eric Jones, who has been with us since February of 2018 as a Patreon supporter. Congratulations, you, sir uh, or lady. I, I assume a sir though. Uh, have won a uh, Nintendo Dad's voucher. We're going to get a hold of you uh, in the coming days so that you can select one of the amazing games uh, that Nintendo is either putting out in their, their future, and perhaps it is Marvel Alliance, perhaps it is um, a Link's Awakening. Um, so congratulations to you, Luke and Sean. Thank you so much for helping out with that. Yeah. Greatly appreciate when, it. When I did that, uh, the producer pop in for Mega Dads, and I did Eric's voice for that. That that's how I did mm -hmm. Eric's voice. <laughs> oh, gotcha. That's fair enough. Now, uh, uh, I'd be remiss if we did not talk about about Nintendo's one last thing. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> Development of Breath of the Wild sequel is now taking place, gentlemen. How do you feel about this? Which, I'm happy. Which one of us? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just <laughs> well, anyone. Anyone at this point? Yeah. Well, the the first response is, duh. Of course, it's in development. But the fact that they're saying it now means that we're going to see it sooner than we think we will, most likely. Yeah. Unless they pull a Metroid Prime Four on us. <laughs> Or a Skyward yeah. Sword, or a Twilight Princess, or <laughs> you don't give me all those other ors. Or a Breath of it, the Wild. <laughs> the the trailer when I I was kept whispering to, or not whispering because we we're in the hotel. I was yelling to Sean. I was like, "This looks like Breath. Of, this looks like a Twilight Princess, but Breath of the Wild. Twilight Princess, but Breath of the Wild." And I was expecting DLC. Mm. I expected it to be a DLC expansion, which I thought was. I was like, "It's been so long. What a great thing!" And then, okay, this isn't an expansion. This is brand new and yeah. uh i feel that breath of the wild is one of the best games ever made mm -hmm. however i don't know that it would age super well so i would like to see certain mechanics you know continue to evolve um within it but the go anywhere aspect is now being emulated by other other uh developers so if if breath of the wild is truly to get a successor and truly mm -hmm. to get a, a a wonderful sequel it's gonna have to keep up with industry standard i think and so that's gonna be really cool to see how they try to improve without changing the direction of that franchise. Because I think Breath of the Wild is is absolutely special, and uh, I'm absolutely all in for it. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought that was just, uh, like, I was thinking about later, that was, what, and I've watched all the other conferences. I felt like that's what was missing from most every other conference, that here's one more thing that you did not see coming in any way that was not leaked that will set the room on fire. Right. And that was it. And it was and I watched the trailer. It was only a minute and 22 seconds. That was mm -hmm. it. And I mean, that was that was kind of the the the, the mic drop for Nintendo. You know, um, I thought it was absolutely amazing. And this is the thing that we've all speculated. And it's a little bit of your point there, too. Um, Luke, was that potentially could it just be DLC? 
Mm-hmm. Right. I thought that, you know, they've talked about their desire to continue with the DLC strategy. Um, but this is taking from their the playbook from uh, the N64. This is the Ocarina of Time versus the Majora's Mask. Right. This is using the same engine. This is a shorter cycle time. Um, and it's and it's and it's a second it's a second game on that platform, which I think is absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Sean, what did you think of this? Why well, waver on this, man? Obviously, I'm excited for a Breath of the Wild sequel, and I think that that's what they should do. Uh, we've been sort of speculating on what to do with that new engine and that new way of portraying and conveying that that's the story and and Link's adventures in that way. I go back and forth because I'm like, are we are we good with just we're working on it? Is kind of like mm. basically what they said, like this is it, and we're working on it, which is great. But at the same time, I'm like, maybe it is, maybe that is the. There's just one other thing, and it's not like this. It, it's a little bit more transparent and clear on like we just had, we're, we're done. Like the main thing, or like everything that you really can sink your teeth into and pre-order this time is we presented it. So we just wanted to let you know that we're working on one other thing. That's a very, that's a very natural way to develop mm-hmm. to deliver the, that information. But I do feel like there's uh, maybe some inconsistency on like what is allowed on the internet, what isn't. And there's some mm-hmm. t- some cases where just giving a logo or a name or even just saying that they're working on like we didn't get even we didn't get a logo or a name. We just said like the sequel to this game is being developed so it was, it was weird i am mm-hmm. obviously excited for the next thing and well, i want them to build off of what they've created they did but give like, us more it, this year than they did two years ago with metroid prime 4 with actual gameplay yeah, yeah you're yeah. right well not necessarily well the, or probably not play like but at least play. an in-engine cutscene, which mm-hmm, does require mm-hmm. effort you know, more than just paying off an animation studio yeah, so I'm torn. I'm torn, but I want I want this, man. I, I like I said before, I don't have a, the the biggest love for the 3D Zelda games, but Breath of the Wild is one of them. Yeah. I probably I spent way more time with Breath of the Wild than really any of the other 3D games probably put together. So yeah, that's that's awesome, man. I'm I'm stoked about it. Yeah, Tim. I'm just I'm ecstatic about what that we're getting it, and but I'm also hoping that. They do just like they did with Breath of the Wild. They take it in another direction with potentially, and I think even Sean, someone you work with, mentioned this, that they go with a, from a Zelda point of view instead of a Link point of view. Mm-hmm. So, And I think that would be something new and different where Zelda is rescuing Link. So mm-hmm. I think that would be different. It seemed to be very dark too, didn't it? It seemed like it definitely yes. gave me that, that Majora's Mask mm-hmm. type of, and maybe mm-hmm. that's the turnaround that they get as well. Very similar approach. Uh, same engine, but just this dark, weird story uh, mm-hmm. and setting. That's what I thought of too, is like that, that whole Shadow World type thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and, and even if it isn't a full coin flip where she saves him, you, you know, I would I would like a game where they both work together. You all can alternate playing each character, doing separate things. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. They're better together. Like when when Link and Zelda are there playing off of one another, it's I mean it's it's sort of like the will they won't they and it's not necessarily that it has to be a romantic relationship, but when they do play off of that relationship and and they show it and they allow you to experience it, that's really where I think Zelda fans get really excited cuz it's like you you are always solo. You're always trying to be the one man show saving the day. But when Link and Zelda share the screen. It's Except just like, for when these it's are an escort mission. Characters. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Then they're exactly. annoying. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, escort missions, I think, have come a long way, too, with uh, the various ways you can interact with, with, with two characters on the screen. Um, but Skyward Sword is a game that I didn't think the gameplay was very good, but the story was excellent, and it was heartfelt because of that special relationship that, that they had uh, throughout that story. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would tend to agree with with I think a little bit of everyone's statements here. Um, I had and I think Sean will lean into you a little bit of like what's appropriate for the internet, right? What's appropriate yep. for what we're talking yep. about? I had this mixed roller coaster reaction, like, and it was, oh my gosh, yes, like absolutely, yep. I'm all in. And then I was like, wait a second, how far out are we on this? Exactly. Right. And then like I kind of bottomed out of like, wait, we did this before with Metroid Prime 4 and Mm -hmm. now we're restarting that. Now I'm not happy. Oh, wait, but we've seen them do short cycle times before with previous engines. So maybe it's closer. Do you mean like I was kind of up and down on like and also (laughs) am I okay? Am I okay with just the fact that we're working on it? Because you could tell me like we're working on Pikmin. We're working like like how far out are you? And then I'm thinking. You know, is is there a reasoning like why are we putting why are we pushing this now? Why are we telling this story now? 
Mm-hmm. Why? Like, what is it there? So, like, and I know that Jesse, you're like, oh, I think this is 2021. I think they can, they have to pull this in 2020. I, I think agree. this is a December 2020 game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's where I think this has to land. Like, they cannot, they cannot cycle much further than that. I don't think. Um, so, and, well, think also, you're we're expecting hardware from both Sony and Microsoft late 2020. It's, Nintendo needs. Uh, a way to be a part of the conversation. That's a good yeah. point. And what I better way than Breath of the Wild? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, and that would be getting pretty close to almost the, if you, if we went, so again, if we went December 2020, uh, you would be potentially looking at, because it would be March 2021, which would be the four-year anniversary of the initial launch of Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you're under yeah, that it's... four-year four-year marker mark. So that's a that's a that's an okay cycle time. You're not having to redevelop. Now again. I am speaking from someone who is not doing this job in any way or any capacity. <laughs> and I just think that video games snap their finger and they're magically here, right? <laughs> but in theory, you're reusing engines, right? You're, you're reusing assets. You don't need to build the whole world from scratch, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and I would also assume that, you know, they they started development of this the day after Breath of the Wild dropped. Like, let's, let's be honest, right? This is probably part of the bigger strategy and also probably one of the reasons that, you know, it was kind of the starting game the launch game for the switch Mm -hmm. right if this was a mid-cycle generation you wouldn't see this right i think that might be part of it justin sorry to interrupt but that's a that's exactly what i'm thinking is the best way to build off of both your points luke and and justin the best way to fight off the next generation is to have a half step or another switch or a switch pro or something launch alongside the yeah. next, like the, the sequel to to Zelda, because I think Breath of the Wild launching the Switch is a huge portion that it got off to such a strong start. Luke and I have a a, a great conversation a couple of weeks ago about how, how we would launch if we ran Xbox, mm-hmm. how we would launch the next um, generation, which games, and it's important which games come out at certain times. Zelda for that hardcore audience to to evangelize the system and the platform, and then around Christmas time you had. Uh, Mario, I think we could see something similar mm-hmm. to have Zelda for the hardcore, quote unquote hardcore, uh, but p- people like us, uh, and then for Mario to come in and save the day and, and send, sell 12 million copies and everything else yeah. like that. So I could see it paired up like that to ward yeah. off PlayStation 5 and Xbox, Super Xbox. Yeah, yeah. It, it also made me. It also made me kind of think. I know this kind of weird selfishness of it, and there's no rhyme and reason. Just my, just my brain kind of floating around was, if they're pulling a second Zelda, are they also going to pull a second Mario? Yeah. Right. Like, are we going to get a Odyssey two? Right. Basically, because again, like if we're, Galaxy two. Yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, can you were in that? We were you. You kind of dropped the hammer in that first year cycle time. So mm-hmm. could you potentially recycle that? And I love that idea there, Sean. Of like, and is that when you say, and here's the Switch Pro? Mm-hmm. Right. It's I don't really, think they need it until then. I really no. don't. No, I don't. I think so. I think they've got enough in their in their kind of um, their wheelhouse to be moving forward. Right. We've already seen a bit of their 2020 calendar, and again for those those and there are some still unknowns. Right. We don't we don't know what's going on with Pikmin. We haven't heard anything about mm-hmm. that. You know, mm-hmm. we don't really know where Metroid Prime Four is going to land. Nintendo seems to be fine of introducing brand new IPs. Right. So there's kind of a lot going on in their house, and at any minute you can get another direct. And by the way, here are five new games that you didn't even know and are showing up this year. Right? Yeah. And that's kind Any of big that. change. Consider, consider big also change. with their new IP, like they, while they have all those new IP coming at any point, if any of that goes awry, it's very likely they have Odyssey two yeah. uh, tech capable, ready to go. They could always compile the 3d land, 3d world. Uh, they can still bring us Mario as needed to rectify anything that might not be going well. Uh, yeah. And I think Sean makes a great point with that. I mean, it's that, that Mario, can save you uh, in many a case if you've got a solid foundation and Odyssey is that solid foundation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, yeah, gentlemen, any kind of final thoughts or closing thoughts? Buy, Ze- buy Zelda on day one, you guys. Yeah. It makes me feel smart. It makes me feel like just <laughs> glad to be playing a video game. It has really great puzzles. They sent me on a bit of a quest just to really wrap that up. Uh, a, a small quest around and I got to see a number of different areas uh, from a forested area to a dungeon to the beach, and I got to use a whole bunch of different uh, weapons and, and items. It is it's so it is so good. I cannot wait to play more. So that is my takeaway. Uh, it is Xbox Drive approved. It is if we ran Nintendo approved, Sean Capri approved. Uh, it is magical. I cannot. This is one of those games. I don't do this very often. I'm like, how many sleeps until this game comes out? Right. That's great. I, That's... I just can't wait, man. 
that is a that is a glowing recommendation there. And I'm just I'm actually just opening up a Nintendo's fact sheet on it right now. See if I can gleam any more, more information from it. Um, and of course, the, again, this is available on your eShop right now. You can take a look at it. beautiful. Oh my god, like the art style is just like um, absolutely gorgeous, right? Mm-hmm. Like again, you talk about playing with your kids. Like this is so absolutely perfect. They have the suggested retail price right now. By the way, folks, is fifty nine ninety nine. This is USD launching September twentieth. Um, and let's just, I'm, you know what, here's, I'm going to just read through some quick bullet points here. Uh, meet, interact with unique locals to help your adventure. Listen to uh, a reawakened soundtrack. Um, earn chambers or dungeon rooms. Complete dungeons to earn rooms for chamber dungeons. Uh, earn additional uh, chambers in mini games by tapping the amiibo. Um, yeah, like this is all, this is all beautiful. I'm all in on this one, Sean. I was in, in on it before, but now your reaction to it, uh, you know, I'm excited for your excitement. Did everybody else know, like, Luke wasn't as surprised as I was, but there was a Chomp Chomp in there. There were Mario enemies in there. Like, is that a thing yep. that yes. we all knew? Yeah, yep. I, didn't play the, I didn't play that one, but I was, I, I was like, my reactions were just completely yeah. over the top. I, I'm I was like, curious what is that to, even doing here? I'm, I'm curious to see what the Wart model will look like in this new art style. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, you know, we had, we had actually, and, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, Sean, I was unaware of it. I had not played Link's Awakening until we had actually played it for a episode of Retro Rewind about oh, yeah. four years ago. And you can, I mean, you can currently download it on your 3DS, dust that thing off, plug it back in, but you can download it. And that's, and that's where it looks like hard pass. I charged <laughs> it for this trip. I almost brought it. You oh, no. I, this close. I, like I said, I charged and I almost brought it. I did. Oh. Well, I, I wanted to pack light as well. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they did but, announce during the Treehouse that the game includes the color dungeon from the DX. Brilliant. So that yeah, was yeah, not lost. Redone. Yeah, this has been redone a couple other times too. So uh, this is absolutely great. Well, Sean, Luke, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm going to be, you know, I, I, I have to ask this question as well, just as before we're wrapping, wrapping it up. Uh, your, your Xbox drive, obviously. So I, how, what, what do you think of the Xbox relationship with Nintendo? What do we, are we going to see more of this in the future? You know, should, are they going to play nice? Continue to play nice? Do you, did you expect more? Expect less from them? What do you What are you hoping? I mean, Xbox really needs a win, so it'd be about time they partner with a good, uh, you know, system. <laughs> I think I think Xbox has been doing obje- truly objectively. They have the fact that their brand is alive after the 2013 debacle of their Xbox One launch is incredible. So they've certainly been doing well. Uh, as far as the relationship with Nintendo, I was expecting more. And I I disagree with Sean in that, you know, we should all the inch the mile kind of thing. Like I thought this would be a, a stronger relationship here at this E3. And the 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 thoughtful part of me wonders if Stadia disrupted that mm. because my thought was that we would see X Cloud uh, technology bringing bringing Nintendo or Xbox titles together. You know, you would have your X Cloud ability on Switch. Uh, and I'm wondering if Stadia didn't disrupt that because Nintendo does need to future proof. They are not a technical powerhouse uh, as compared to uh, Microsoft with their Azure Cloud or Google with its uh, server farms or even Sony with its hardware. So I genuinely was cur- curious to see more. I thought that we would see more. Uh, and I wonder if Stadia wasn't the reason. Uh, I also noted that we didn't see any uh, Ubisoft Nintendo crossover type mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. which um you know i was playing starlink on the way down with the Star Fox dlc and, and we have mario kingdoms about kingdom battle on my uh switch we didn't see any of that either and that that surprised me and i wonder where that that came from um that said nintendo is the company that at any point could drop a direct and the internet would pause Mm-hmm. People would pause, consumers would pause, and it could be new information. And in this industry now, we more and more does it become a year-round news cycle. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, that's exactly right. For those of you that are disappointed that maybe you didn't, you didn't get what you wanted from Nintendo, it's kind of like the weather. Just wait a couple of weeks; it'll all change, <laughs> right? And that's, and that's and that's what they've been really able to do well. So, uh, Luke, Sean, thank you so much for for joining us for this. We greatly appreciate your time. Uh, I know it's been a busy week for you. Uh, you know, as fans of you both individually, um, you know, and fans of Xbox Drive, it was a delight and pleasure to watch this opportunity come up and and obviously not you know it's not out of luck but rather the hard work that you guys have been putting through the amazing content that you've been putting out and then just to be able to watch you via social media the interactions you've been having the pictures you've been having the fun you've been having an absolute 
treasure. So please continue what you're doing. Uh, I it is the best Xbox podcast that I listen to uh, on my drive in my car uh, every single week as well. So thank you guys so much. Uh, obviously, remind people where they can go to pick up either you know follow you guys or follow your content or what you want to do. Promote yourself. Well, I can't do that before. Uh without thanking you justin for connecting like you mentioned it's hard work but it's friends man it's we've we've all developed a lot of really meaningful lifelong relationships together by making this content so yeah like we we work hard to to make content we're critical on ourselves we're always trying to make the next episode better than the last episode but at the end of the day like it would all be meaningless and it would probably get us really nowhere if we weren't partners and we weren't friends together there's a lot of people who did a lot of things to get luke and i here and you are one of them and the fact that we got a once in a lifetime chance maybe 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 next year that would be great too uh but really like a dream come true to to go in and do something that very very few people get to do really the moment we we exited the booth we went back around to the front side the the the, the more fan facing side of the nintendo booth and uh people were contemplating lining up to go play Link's awakening and i had to i was instantly kind of shoved back into real life and going most people wait three hours to have the experience that I just did, if at all. So mm -hmm. it's like this. Every Not many people get to go to E3. The, mo the people who do go to E3, they have to wait hours on end and make difficult choices to play a game like, like that. Um, we just had a really, really special moment. And it's you you went out on a limb for us, man. And I really do appreciate that. And I, I, I treasure your friendship. And I wish Zach was here as well to, to share in this moment as well. We had an absolutely amazing time. But with that said... If you guys ever uh, enjoy or want to hear what's going on in the Xbox land, Luke and I have a podcast that I record while I drive home from work. And I put the laptop in the passenger seat, and it's called the Xbox Drive. And it fits in your commute because it fits in mine. And I drive the car. Luke drives the show. And we just have a great time with it, man. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery, Capri like the pants. And if you need more Nintendo content, I do If We Ran Nintendo with Bobby, the Nintendo guru, uh, which, of course, started when the Wii U was sucking ass. Uh, and now it's a, it's a more difficult show to do because everything's going very, very well. So <laughs> if we're on Nintendo on Twitter, Sean Capri on Twitter, the Xbox Drive on Twitter for me. Uh, I would echo many of those thoughts of appreciation and ask that anybody that uh, enjoyed us on here and, and to to reach out and tell, tell us on Twitter because it means a lot at the Xbox Drive. Uh, and then, you know, check out our show. We are very proud of it. We work very hard on it. And it mean, meant a lot that people were so kind in helping us get here. And so thank you, Justin and, and the Nintendo Dads, for uh, lining us up. We hope we did you guys. I hope we hope we honored the, 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 the putting yourselves out there that you did. So thank you. Just, just for clarity. And also, sorry, Luke, where can they find you? Because you do some things, right? Oh, yes. Um, at MLS Reserves on Twitter. Um, and then, of course, I, I stream on Mixer as well uh, at Mixer.com slash ghost. But uh, truly, just thank you. Yeah, no worries. No, gentlemen, I, I, you know, I just want to say, like, you guys don't need to thank us. The Mega Dads did this last year. The bar was so low that just the oh, fact true. you guys showed up, I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> hands That's above true. more than what I expect from John and Adam. So you guys were absolutely fantastic. And if everyone ever wants a while... Uh, wants to find out why I give Luke Lore uh, such a hard time about anything, uh, you know. And just for reality's sake, it's a, it's a bit of a caricature. I don't hate Luke. I don't think he's a horrible person. Uh, he has <laughs> poor taste in video games r r around Donkey Kong, so that's why I give him some barbs. So if everyone's like, "Why is he so mean to him?" That's why it's why kind of a, bit of a, why is bit he of named a, Donkey? He's an ape. Bit of an insight. And he's got a chimp as a nephew, and he bit wears a, a tie. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, get out of here. Bit of an inside joke. Uh, but I would say, guys, also, again, and again, we're going to stop blowing up, uh, you know, blowing up your skirts here. But Xbox Drive, seriously, guys, if you guys have not subscribed to it, I am. you guys all know that I'm a Nintendo fan, have always been. Listening to Luke and Sean has almost made me buy an Xbox. Mm. Um, and if it, was, it. if it was cheaper, I'm going to be honest, I almost bought the Stadia thing. If, if, if Xbox can get a price down like near that, I'd probably pull the trigger on it. I just wouldn't tell my wife. Yeah, it's we'll coming. see what happens there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is all. Thank you so much for jumping into our E3, post-E3 direct conversation again with Luke and uh, Sean, direct from E3, their experiences. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this content. Uh, thank you, obviously, to Jesse and to Tim who have joined us. We are going to be back again, ladies and gentlemen, in two days from now with our regular scheduled episode uh, where we're going to break down everything that's happened over the next week and hear more from your commentary as well. We have reaction videos out there to, uh, to catch on. So 
If you want, follow us on Nintendo Dads, all the social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can email us at nintendodads at gmail.com. You can phone us, but I don't have the notes up. But you could do that, but nobody does, so don't do that. Um, but ladies or just and listen gentlemen, Thursday. We'll, we'll yeah, let you know Thursday. then. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And we are giving away another Nintendo voucher uh, in Thursday's show as well, guys. So for myself, for Jesse, Tim, Luke, and for Sean, thanks for tuning in to Nintendo Dads. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening into Nintendo Dads. Chupal, 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 chupal.